Hello everybody, this is Mark I'm with SPX Cooling Technologies and today we're going to talk about a mechanical vibration switch. This is a switch that's very commonly used on package type towers and also field erected towers to pick up an abrupt movement in the cooling tower and shut the fan off. What I have here in my hands is a vibration switch made by a company called IMI. It is their model 685A and I'm going to start talking to you about the switch from the outside and uh, take the lid off and work to the inside, show you a little bit how it works, and then we're going to show it to you installed on a cooling tower. So this switch of standards comes in a NEMA 4X enclosure, NEMA 4 being for watertight, X being for corrosive resistance. It has a nice epoxy coating on there to help resist the elements of a cooling tower. Held on by uh, four captive screws, I'm going to take the lid off. There's a real nice gasket on here to help keep the water out. There's a couple features on the outside I want to show you real quick. This is a proper orientation of it with the conduit coming into the bottom of the switch. You never want to have it like this with the conduit coming to the top. That gives you a chance of water getting inside the switch. So always keep it coming out the bottom. Standard orientation here. There's two devices on the outside. One is an adjustment dial to set the set point at which this will trip. The trip point on this switch is factory set by Marley. And as a benchmark of measurement, we use a distance between the edge of this cylinder to the edge of this magnet, which happens to be right at one quarter inch. And that will reflect a one to two G setting. So if anyone turns the adjustment dial in or out, you can always put it back, we're referring back to that quarter inch gap setting, which is also in the user manual. Also on the outside is a manual reset plunger. Right now, the switch is engaged, ready for operation. If the switch trips, you get a little red indicator button that pops out, giving you a visual that the vibration switch has tripped. To reset it, simply push it back in. This uses a spring tension and also a magnetic force here to keep it in position. As you adjust the stem up and down, the cylinder moves up and down and increases and decreases the set point at which it will trip. For example, this is ready to go, and when it's subjected to a severe shock, it opens up like this. And also inside the cavity are two auxiliary switches. Each auxiliary switch has a Form C contact, so you can wire it for normally or normally close. Typically, you use one of them in the normally closed state, and wire that back to the VFD or the starter coil circuit. So if it experiences a shock and trips, that contact will open and shut the equipment down. The second switch is typically used as a normally open. And both these switches operate in unison with each other. The second switch being normally open, when the switch trips, that contact will go closed and you can use it to initiate alarm through a building management system. Okay, now we're gonna to go to a real cooling tower and I'm gonna show you how to, where, where the typical mounting location is and uh, how, to, how to test it. Okay, we're now standing inside of a cooling tower and I'm gonna show you the typical placement for a mechanical vibration switch. This horizontal piece is called a mechanical beam and it supports the gearbox and the motor with a rotating fan. So if there's an imbalance situation or severe abrupt shock of some sort, it will be distributed to this mechanical beam. The vibration switch is bolted securely to it. So right now I'm running the fan blade off of a VFD at a very slow safe speed. My vibration switch is in the closed position, allowing the vibrations, uh, excuse me, allowing the VFD to operate. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to subject the mechanical beam using a four pound dead load hammer with, with a movement that's going to transfer to the internals of the mechanical vibration switch and shut it down. So you don't have to hit it real hard, not real lights, somewhere in between, and using a good four pound hammer will get this beam to move. As you notice, the red plunger popped out. That means that the contact on the inside of the switch opened and we just shut down the safety circuit of the VFD. To reset it, one would push it in. And a lot of times in cooling tower controls, this is called two wire control. So when you reset your safety, the fan will start turning again. So I reset the vibration switch. And the drive here will go ahead and uh, start spinning the fan real shortly. There we go. 
and we're good to go. Thank you for joining this session of Mark Roadhouse with SPX Cooling Technology. <laughs>